Hello, Guardians. Welcome to Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. I am your host, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, maybe trading in some uh, Guardian gear for some Spartan gear in the next couple days. But the vault dwelling. Um, Yotin, hopefully, Toten. the next couple hours. Right. Yoten Toten. <laughs> Josh Finney. Corey, it has been a week. <laughs> T- we say this every week. It's I know, but it's, been a week. I mean, this, this dude, is like doing this show is like the beginning of my weekend. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, it's just for like, you're listening to this. It's Friday morning. Like it is, it is effectively the weekend for us. Yeah. And there's a lot of really good games I want to get to this weekend. I know. Like the, hopefully I'll get my halo technical test invite this week, this weekend. Uh, I hope so. They did. They have made a huge point to say this is the smallest group they're sending it to, but it was still out to like a hundred thousand people. Mm-hmm. Um, or at least we have over a hundred thousand that we know for sure signed up. I don't know how many this actually went out to, but it seems like it was a pretty huge group. Yeah. Um, I freaked out when they started sending them out on Tuesday because my email did not come in. Yeah. And I was really, really mad about it. I tweet. I angry tweeted. <laughs> not at 343 but just in general and then uh you know i prayed to my effigy of phil spencer that i keep in my closet before i went to bed and lo do you know 2 15 in the morning i get woken up by an email coming in it is the technical test invite i may have made an audible noise that woke my girlfriend up <laughs> Chelsea was not happy with me when I had that. I literally rolled over. I'm like, babe, babe, are you asleep yet? Are you asleep yet? She's like, I was. I was like, I got into the Halo beta. And she's like, what part of this could not wait until morning? <laughs> and promptly went back to sleep. Uh, that's funny. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm in the infinite technical test. I'm waiting. I well, while we're doing this, I'm literally refreshing Twitter. I'm refreshing Brian Gerard's Twitter feed. This guy's gonna get really tired of it, mm-hmm. but I'm refreshing his and Joe Statton's feeds to know when this goes live. I'm ready. I'm locked and loaded. I'm prepared to get up and go get my controller and download it on the main TV that I can clearly see from my desk if I turn around. That's awesome. I uh. Dude, speaking of it being a week, I today is what Thursday. We're recording. Corey this. has more serious things that happen to him. <laughs> I mean, between my main job and my second job, I've probably worked this week at least fifty hours, and I still have tomorrow to go. And then, uh, you know, there's a couple other things going on. Plus, plus kids. You know, like that four month old who wants to wake up in the middle of the night and. All you want to do is, like, you know, leave the bedroom and go lay on the couch. <laughs> but it's a good time, let me tell you. I'm definitely keeping uh, Monster Energy in business. I will tell you that. Oh, man. Uh, I'm, uh, man, I'm really, really excited for uh, for this weekend. There, I've been, uh, you know, kind of taking a few mental health days uh, this week. I have played an absolute ass load of pillars of eternity, uh, which I got unexpectedly hooked on last week and blew through the first game. And I'm now very, very deep into the dauntingly large second game. Um, like instantly, I think there's more to do in like the first big city you come to than in almost in the entirety of the first game. Uh, the maps are massive. You build and captain your own ship and in, uh, in dead fire. The second one, it's made avowed one of my most anticipated games. I love Skyrim S games, and if it's that type of game set in this world with these characters and this like the lore around their gods, I am insanely excited. It sounds exciting. I'm excited to try uh, Flight Simulator, honestly, and the Ascent. So I played Flight Sim on Tuesday when it came out. Uh, I very exci- again very excitedly. Uh, my girlfriend was not happy with me at all on Tuesday for some reason because uh, I very excitedly also had her come out to the couch when Flight Sim installed, and uh, we flew to Disney World. Nice. I'm sorry. I keep muting my microphone because my child is yeah. screaming. 
the, the map is really outdated because um, Galaxy's Edge is not built yet. Yeah. Like, it, it is it is 100% not built. Uh, they haven't even torn down the areas that they tore down for it yet on this map. Oh, gosh. That's oh, yeah. Like, uh, it so, is like, definitely you under see, like, the Backlot Express stuff there and everything? Uh, yeah, you can see you can see part of the Backlot Express. Um, we also flew over uh, Anaheim, and I believe, if I remember correctly, um, Galaxy's Edge is still being built over Anaheim when we flew over it. Uh, but it, it's a really cool game. If you have a Series X or even a Series S, I really encourage and you can find the hard drive space. I encourage you to download it, play it, fly over your house, fly, fly somewhere like New York or Paris. Like they have some curated flights built in that'll just drop you right over New York or right at Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like five curated ones. I think it's Cairo for the for the pyramids. It's Mount Everest, New York, Tokyo, and Bora Bora, I think, are the places you can go automatically. Cool. Um, anywhere else you got to fly, but you can pick any airport, big or small, to fly out of. Mm-hmm. Fly out of, fly into. It's really cool. Um, flying the big-ass jet is definitely more difficult than flying the little plane. That's not true. The bigger, uh, the better, they say. Dude, I crashed so fucking bad. Oh, God. Like, it literally said, you crashed. That's what came up on the screen. It did not show me the crash. It blacked out right before I hit the ground. <laughs> did you try it to was crash not... into Cinderella's castle at Disney World? Uh, no, I tried to take a turn, like, really sharp, pretending like it was Forza, <laughs> and it caused my plane to uh, have the engine stall and for me to crash into the ocean. Oh. Mm. I, went you, down uh... outside... I went down outside of Toronto. Mm. Okay. Well, I'm so. I think the first thing I'm going to do is try to fly through the <laughs> fly through the uh, monorail tunnel in the contemporary. It does not work. I attempted that as well with a little plane. Oh man, you, you will absolutely die. You are moving at such a rapid speed. You are going to die attempting it. Because <laughs> it, I'm. I don't know if you could fit the plane in there, but it def, There's definitely like an invisible wall. Yeah. They, I, they did not render Chef Mickey's in this game. Oh, man. <laughs> probably. But uh, probably it, 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 it's still really neat. I think it's I think it's really cool. It, the fact that it looks this good on consoles. Yeah. Uh, and mind you, you need to be doing the cloud streaming option, which does take a lot of data. Yeah. But it, the fact that it looks this good is just it's disgusting. Yeah. This is the realistic way that most of us are going to be able to experience it the way it was intended to. Um, even if you have a super powerful PC, you're probably not hitting what they want you to see. Yeah. But this on an OLED is just mwah, chef's kiss. Mm. I bought Incredible. I bought some ISP 4K monitors, and I'm going to hook my Series X up in my office in the S in the living room now. Just because these monitors are way nicer, and I, I feel like I'll get more out of my Series X by doing that, so... Uh, I'm excited for sure. I'm excited. You know, I'm. I... Yeah, I want to see what happens. Uh, but th- if if this looks this good, this is in my outside of Ratchet and Clank, this is probably the best looking next gen game right now or current gen game. Yeah. Um, I really got to get out of saying next gen. It's the best looking current gen game right now. Yeah. In my opinion, um, it's this Ratchet and Clank, and then there's like, I don't think there's anything else that comes close as good as. I think the Ascent looks. I watched a lot of gameplay of that today. And uh, as good as Returnal looks, man, I think these two are still on another level. Yeah. So, oh, Dude, I'm so excited. I'm very excited. This this fall is... It's full, man. This fall is full of stuff I want to play, and it's exciting. I like having stuff to look forward to. You know? So. Uh, well, Josh, that's our... Uh, non-destiny minute yeah we Uh, did it at the very beginning instead of at the end we did that's good let's get it out of the way we're just gonna you know push it out put push it through through uh but josh the big topic for the twab is crossplay it's coming it's a big one guys this is a beefy beefy get, get a drink pull up a chair there is a lot here, and I'm not quite sure I understood it all after reading it twice. So we're going to try here a third time and see. 
<gasps> Here we go. <laughs> right. Crossplay is coming. Season 15. Cross Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Stadia. Um, things we are going to talk about today. Guardian Identity. Naming changes. Bungie Friends. Fireteam Invites. Multiplayer Privacy. Crossplay Matchmaking. Communication. And the overall roadmap. Uh, they do confirm in here that uh, the reason that Season of the Splicer launched so rough was because they accidentally left the door open for crossplay, which we all knew happened, and mm-hmm. they just didn't outright say it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they did that technical test. I'm shocked. Uh, I want to get out of the way right here. They do not announce another test for crossplay. Yeah. I'm absolutely shocked they're not doing another one. Um, I don't. I don't know if I really like that. I Especially because, best- like, are they even back in the office? Like, aren't isn't most of the team still working from home? Almost the entire team is working yeah. from home. I think their main engineers are back in the office now. Um, and there's definitely been pictures posted from Bungie HQ. Like, oh, it's my first time back in the studio in, like, 18 mm-hmm. months and stuff like that. Like, Yeah, plus, I, I, plus I've been seeing a lot of new hires posts they're like this is my first day at bungee yep. is it like a technical artist or a, you know that type of thing well we know they're staffing up for we, we, we've discussed before mm-hmm. we we know they're staffing up for matter right uh, there's the net ease project that is still happening we yeah. think like yeah it's a 50 million dollar investment it's got to be happening at some point mm-hmm. and of course they are growing the destiny team All right and, and i mean like some of these hires i'm sure are going to be assisting the amsterdam office when it opens next year right so We've seen the there's been some construction photos of the Bungie HQ. It's getting like majorly redone. Big facelift. We know they were aiming to double the size of the Washington office. Right. So like they, I think at one point said that they hired so many new people during the course of the pandemic or like right before that they estimated about half of their workforce had, and this was several months ago had never set foot inside the studio before. Mm-hmm. Which is That's insane. That's wild. So crazy. That's wild to think about that they did that much growth. But that that makes it clear. Like they're tripling down on Destiny. They're really working on Matt. I wonder, whatever Matt becomes. <clears throat> well that plus I wonder if that's why the this next season is so long too. And they pushed it not necessarily to polish the Witch Queen, which I'm sh- I'm sure is a big part of it, but also like mm-hmm. just to get there Team, their new hires acclimated and I think know. that's definitely I think that's definitely part of it. We know they've had some some big departures. Yeah. But also like we have to remember that at least the framework for Beyond Light was in place before work from home started. Right. They've not like over the course of work from home they've completely from the ground up built Season of the Chosen and Splicer which I think we can all agree are like two of the best if not the two best seasons outside of arrivals that we've gotten in this game. Right. Uh, over the last two years, it's really impressive that the best work has come from working at home. Uh, we know Bungie's kind of shifting to more of a work work from home if you want to pace mm-hmm. um, for a lot of their small, well, not smaller, but like more of their like big force work mm-hmm. um, or we'll like, we'll let you do like half and half or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um I do think part of it also, as they're they're going to de- they detail uh, some of the crossplay roadmap in here, that has clearly been a big hurdle for them, and will not be completely ready uh, this next season. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's uh, let's talk about this. Let's so, do it. In a crossplay world that also supports cross save, it became clear we had an identity crisis. We didn't want the name of your guardian's head to change based on where you logged into the game. We felt this fought against the fantasy of who you are in this new unified community. Even more concerning, we didn't want the names of your friends and clanmates to change based on where they logged into the game. Thank you. Having to keep a who's who cheat sheet of your friends' names didn't meet our effortless bar for crossplay. As such, we're converting everyone's name over to an identity that will remain consistent across all platforms you play from. We're calling this your Bungie name. While this will cause a one-time naming reshuffle, we feel this is better for everyone in the long run. Bungie names will work and look as follows. Bungie name, player name, uh, number symbol, one, two, three, four. Display name, player name. Hash, number sign. And numeric ID, one, two, three, four. Um, I encourage everybody to go look at the screen that they provided. Um, it did not make a lot of sense to me when I read it, but now looking at it, how it looks on here, um, you do have your, you have your in-game name. Mm-hmm. 
And like this person pretty clearly has that as their Bungie name. And then there's the random numbers after it that they assign you. So um, an example of what you look like in the tower, it's just your name. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no numbers. So it's just the, it's just the uh, display name that you picked. Mm-hmm. Um, as part of the creation of Bungie names, we'll be running all player names through a character filtration process and an offensive ter- term moderation process. First, we'll be stripping out all characters that we're una- we are unable to display in game or cannot be typed in the player search box via console virtual keyboards. I Means some of the extended character sets we've supported for player names on Steam will no longer be able to be used. So basically, if you can't do it on Xbox, you can't do it anywhere, anywhere else. Like that's if it's not in the Xbox keyboard, you can't use it. Essentially, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so they specifically say, we'll miss you fellow guardian hand cannons, then I have a rifle rocket launcher, but we do want your console friends to be able to find you via player search. Um, and so they, they show you a little screen here for cross play. Um, Bungie name has been generated from your platform name. Um, so I, I kind of see how it works now in theory, but, um, I want to talk about this. So if you remove those characters, it's possible you will have guardian random number. So we won't have a name change feature at launch. We're working diligently to get you an early version of the feature this winter. We highly th- recommend you think carefully about what name you'd like to rock in Destiny 2 sooner rather than later. We don't want you to be stuck with a handle you're not overly fond of when the name change feature goes live. Mm-hmm. So basically, I think how this how this sounds is whatever the name is on your Bungie profile is mm-hmm. what you're going to get here. Mm-hmm. So for those of us who made Bungie accounts... For, like, Halo 3, congratulations, that's the name you are stuck with for the first couple months. Yeah, I mean, you can change it on Bungie.net now, though, right? Like, you can... I don't think so. No, you can, because I changed mine from something to what I'm currently at on Xbox on Bungie.net about two years ago. I mean, I'm on Bungie.net okay. right now. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I, I'm yeah, looking display, too because if, if I can name, do this, I want to try and claim my name. Display name. Yeah, I am Corey in HD. Unique ID. I am Corey in HD. Um, yeah, because it's, I used to be, I was Rogue Spartan 4 since Halo 3, and I changed it when I changed everything. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, I changed it. it I changed it already. So, Claim your name now. Go go there. Try it, and like, you can link your accounts net on obviously too. Um, oh yeah, I mean my accounts are already linked. Um, it's just I've wanted to change how I'm displayed in game for a while. Yeah. Um, and so like not necessarily on my Xbox. Like everybody knows me on Xbox. Yeah. So I don't really want to be changing that, but I definitely wanted to change it here. Yeah. So I did that. We'll see if it still honors it for me. I'm mm-hmm. very curious. Oh, so you can change your display name. My unique ID is not able to be used. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, anyways, I can fool with that later, though. Um, Getting back to the Schwab and not me trying to claim my name. Yeah, sorry, everybody. We're just trying to figure <laughs> this out so we can deliver the correct information. <laughs> Yeah, we, I, I, like I said, this is the third time I'm reading this and I still don't get it. Yeah. Uh, Bungie roster experience has always been an essential part of our games. For crossplay, we want to deliver that same simple experience. This happened, to make this happen, we created a system to bridge that platform called Bungie Friends. We didn't want to add considerable complexity, so you will still find all of your friends in one flat list. To make it a bit easier to find a specific friend, we've also added a platform filter. You can still see just the friends who are logged into the same platform as you. You've always been able to have clan members across multiple platforms in Destiny, but finally with the launch of Crossplay, you will be able to see everyone who's online. That's really nice. You can see... Okay, I'm seeing this now. This is... Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's funny, because the people that are on PlayStation just have a generic controller, because they're clearly playing, like, either on Steam or on Xbox, and you'll see the Xbox logo, the mm-hmm. Steam logo, the Windows logo, and then you just see a generic controller for somewhere else in the Stadia logo. So clearly... Yeah. Yeah. That's odd. I think it's I think it's pretty funny. Um, 
Uh, Crossplay without an easy way to add new friends does not get it done. There are three different ways to add your friends from all platforms to your Bungie friends. Log into Destiny 2 on a device where you want to turn platform friends into Bungie friends. Then issue requests via our roster screen, which means I'll be going through and adding all of my clanmates, all of our regular friends, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Except for that A1 Johnny guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Uh, you can search for your friends using the player search on the invite screen or use Bungie.net Friends Finder. Um, in order to make fire team invites work across all platforms, we pulled all the invite infrastructure into the game. All right, here's where it gets a little confusing to me. When you get a fire team invite, you will see an in-game invite notification. I can't wait to miss those because they don't show us what they're going to look like. Um, to accept the invite, go to your roster screen, then the in invite section, then interact with the invite to accept and join your fire Gosh, team. Gosh, this is so just... <laughs> Notice that the invite screen is where you can search for other guardians, accept friend requests and clan invites. Oh, this is going God. to be a fucking disaster. <laughs> I cannot possibly Dude, emphasize this, this, this enough. This has to be some sort of, like, look... We know this is bad. We're going to find a better way, but this is what we could come at, come oh, up with right now. Let me tell you, it gets worse, Corey. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> to help players find each other, the community has built a series of external group finding forums and tools, including our own fire team finder, oh, which God. can now issue fire team invites to all platforms. Love it. Love it. Nobody uses it because it's toxic as fuck, but great. Love it. We're going to continue <laughs> using LFG on Xbox. <laughs> when bu- it was such a success here that they just built it into the whole console. Great. <laughs> <laughs> when building Crossway, we wanted to make sure our new fire team invite system wasn't getting in the, wasn't getting in the way to pulling together your fire team. Oh, as God. such, invite screen allows for players to search for each other and issue fire team invites. So you have to type it in manually if you have a big friends list the moral of the story is just don't have friends right oh my god that's gosh, gonna make dude. your crossplay experience 15 times better i'm looking at this image and it's just like part way through the the thing and it just looks like a disaster dude this is gonna be so bad it oh. gets make it worse go down to players go down to player search image it gets even worse um oh god i do i do like what they say next year though especially in wake of a lot of the activision blizzard stuff that's come out the past uh week and a half we addressed it last week it's only gotten more heinous uh you bobby kotick to... took like a week to respond fuck bobby kotick all my homies hate bobby kotick um just kotaku had an absolutely damning report with receipts um god did you but see the, all, all did you that see the Cosby sweet image that was floating around that was disgusting. Uh, I did. That, that was in that was in the Kotaku article that I uh, shot you yesterday. Um, yeah. Oh God! Man, all right, you're the one that showed me that. Never mind. Wow. Destiny Destiny has been no stranger. It's an online game. It's no stranger to predators to harassment. Um, one of my favorite, one of my favorite Destiny streamers practically got chased off the internet last year. People faked. Uh, DMs and texts from her uh, and spread them around, implying that she was a racist. Um, got dropped by a lot of her sponsors, things like that, and it was just absolutely damning. Like some of the, and, you know, we we've covered a few of the things on here uh, before uh, with certain streamers. You know, a lot of things got outed last year. It really led to gaming's Me Too moment. Um, so what they say here, I think, is really important. There are members of our community who experience targeted harassment. To help players protect themselves, we've added a block system. We've also added additional privacy tools so players can protect themselves from broad harassment. Uh, Most of the social privacy settings can be accessed from the roster screen where you will have control over the different kinds of invites you're willing to see and consider. For the time being, your privacy setting for clan invites will still be controlled through your personal Bungie.net privacy settings. And so you have social preferences here. Fireteam privacy uh, fire team invites bungee friend requests you can set those to invite only friends only and public um i really 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 like this mm-hmm. um because fire team privacy for me it's pretty clearly going to be friends only mm-hmm. uh people who can just join me at random um fire team invites i don't really care if you send me an invite i'm just going to ignore you mm-hmm. but that is absolutely going to be set to that and then bungee friend requests also probably going to be set to invite only um just flat out, I I don't mind helping people out with content, but I don't like the people who just clearly go to the tower, look for like one of the most powerful people they can find, and they're like a hundred below you, and they're sending you messages. Please raid with me. Yeah. 
Um, I, I get those, you know, I get several of those a season and it's just like, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. You want to do the end game content. You are nowhere near ready to do end game though. Yeah. Um, and that's just, that's, that's me trying to help you basically. Um, here, <laughs> in crossplay. <laughs> God, this is I'm sorry. Just... I, I'm trying to get through this without laughing. I mean, try, you can't. Trying to that's create the, a team of global point. community of guardians. Crossplay enabled us to ask a ton of questions about input methods and how we create a level playing field in competitive modes. While the following may not be the answer forever, i.e., it will not be. They will absolutely change this. It will be our approach for matchmaking in competitive modes. Crucible, Iron Banner. Trials and Gambit at launch. PC players will match with other PC players. Console players will match with other console players. Stadia will be in the console pool for like all like two thousand of you that still play on Stadia. I mean that's over that's overestimating, isn't it? A little here, bit? <laughs> here is the one that is going to cause some outrage. I've already seen some people going, "What the fuck?" Fire teams with any combination of PC players and console players will go to the PC player pool. Hmm. Um, this will automatically create a problem for a lot of people. Yeah, um, I know that. Shouldn't it be uh, the other way around? No, no. Because and here, here, here's the thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna defend this. I'm gonna defend this. I can't believe I'm actually gonna do this. Oh boy, this is the better of the two solutions, I think. Because otherwise, you're gonna have people going into trials and saying, t- telling one of their people, "Hey, get on console. We'll play on mouse and keyboard," mm. and then just absolutely fucking steamroll you know with their higher settings and every year their higher settings their mouse and keyboard their faster inputs etc this is not a good solution i want to be really clear i do not like this solution but i think of the if those are the two options that we are given this is better yeah Uh, i do believe at one point you will be able to choose whether you want to match with them but Mm -hmm. as far as competitive modes go i think this is probably the only way you can do this this will create a problem for one specific person that I know who was planning on playing on PC, um, RIP A1 Johnny, mm-hmm. um, this is going to be terrible for people like you, who most of your friends are on console and do not play on PC. Um, that's basically asking them to take a death sentence to come play on PC yeah, or to come, mm-hmm. come play comp with you if you don't log in on your Xbox. So I think. Honestly, the solution is at that point play all your PVE content through PC, and then move over you're to gonna console have, for your yeah. You're going to have to go to console for your comp. Are they for right now? Are they still going to like to that point? Are they still going to make people buy the games on whatever platforms they're playing on, or like I don't. You know what I mean? Like, if you're playing on PC, but then you move to so PlayStation, my, like you're going to have understand- to buy that content still, I right? I believe so, yes. Yeah. I believe you have to buy the expansion. So I think yeah. you have to buy, like, Beyond Light in both cases. Right. Like, But I think... Wasn't your season I, pass tied to your Bungie account, but the Your expansions- season pass is, yes. So, yeah. Okay. Your season pass is your silver and your expansion pass, however, are both tied to your platform. Right. So like I can't buy a bunch of silver like on Xbox and take it to my P- to my PC or to my PlayStation account. Right. Um, well, which... when so how does that work when Destiny comes to Game Pass? Will your Xbox stuff transfer? You're over gonna to have you're gonna have to download the license through the Windows Store, I'm sure. Right. Which is gonna create a whole nother issue. Um, I mean that that's why we're seeing all the all those images in the mm-hmm. TWAP, right? Right. Up there is I think that they're I think they're. Pre- preparing for that and they just have simply haven't made the announcement yet yeah but that uh there's one windows logo up there and for me that gives it away that they're getting ready to pull the trigger on it Mm -hmm. um and that i do suspect they're going to come out on the 24th and be like hey by the way we know we promised this a year ago uh it's here Mm -hmm. it's here it's on pc game pass right now go download everything you think that'll Uh, come to come during the 24th event the august 24th event yeah yeah i think that's the logical time to announce it i think you want that in place and make sure that goes smoothly right before you add crossplay into the mix i was going to address that later but i wanted to go ahead and talk about that right there for pve modes however there will be one global pool which this is fantastic if you want to go do nightfalls it literally will never have been easier to do nightfalls um i do worry that this is going to you know, when you go to try and team up with people, I do think this is going to lead to some of the toxicity that we've seen on the PC side. Mm-hmm. Um, 
for example, in high-end PvE content, a lot of people do not want to play with a hunter because hunters simply do not offer something that the other classes don't at this point or that a weapon does not. Mm-hmm. You know, Warlocks, they have they have Well, they have Geomags, um, they have things like that. Titans, obviously Titan has Bubble. Mm-hmm. They have <laughs> they have thunder crash mm-hmm. um you know if you get uh, if you get falling star hunters have a tether that's been nerfed a million times and mm-hmm. divinity does the job just as good if not better mm-hmm. we have celestial nighthawk but that mean i mean celestial nighthawk is fine it's great but that's literally the only thing your hunter can be on them at that point we can't buff other members of the team right we don't uh you know we have a quick fire super sure and it's great um, but I'm getting really tired of having a Celestial in every encounter, for example. That is something we've seen on the PC side. I don't know if I've ever seen a Hunter wear anything else besides Celestial in a big, like, in a big encounter, you know? Like, especially, like, either, like, uh, boss well, battles we, or, we like... wore Star Eaters for those glorious six days we wore Star Eaters. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though, is, like... And then we oh, immediately got nerfed into the ground because they realized, oh, God, we actually made Hunters viable. Oh, oh, well, when we did raids that, you know, had jumping puzzles, hunters weren't war bones, right? Like, I, I, but like, mm-hmm. we still have to wear stompies for a yeah. lot of them. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just like, <sighs> it's, it's really I kind annoying. of like for in a lot of ways, I kind of feel bad for hunters because they're kind of stuck. You know, I just I we're, like... we're very much stuck. Hunters, I would argue. And I mean, we, we've heard that some of the white subclasses are going to start getting overhauled in season 15. Mm-hmm. I would argue hunters need the most uh, TLC out of anybody because we have a bunch of we have decent classes, but nothing that really like dominates in any one activity. I mean, so hunters are the choice to go to for PvP for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but for PvE content, which I argue Destiny is a PvE game, first and foremost, mm-hmm. I don't think you have to argue that. I think no, I don't think you do. Everybody either. agrees with you. Hunters are pretty. They're pretty clearly like the worst choice, even if that's your play style, like me. Yeah. Like they, it's pretty clearly your worst choice. It's gotten to the point where I'm starting to use a warlock now. Yeah. In some activities, or like I'm taking it in in raids, like clearing, you know, trying to clear vault and deep stone with a warlock just to get more familiar with it. Right. So let's let's get on to the one the thing that I I personally think that this is just. Oh man, <laughs> this is this is the borderline catastrophe one for me. Oh god! Um, chatting with friends, voice chat between platforms when crossplay releases will not be enabled. Oh god! We have run into. And I, I appreciate we got an explanation here. We've run into some late breaking issues with development and are currently working on making sure this experience is ready before shipping it live. Good, good. I can only imagine the outrage if you watched it and it was broken. Uh, we know this will create a less than ideal player experience out of the gate. We even consider delaying crossplay as a whole. Unpopular opinion. I think you should have. Yeah. I think you should have come out and explained this mm-hmm. and said, hey, this is a problem. We're going to do another tech test or two, though. Um, we're going to try a tech test with microphones enabled. Mm-hmm. See if we can pinpoint the issue, get y'all to help us a little bit. And I understand that's so much easier said than done. Right. Right. I'm not trying to backseat develop. Right, yeah. but but again, it's not like Bungie is some small indie developer. They're no. they're Bungie, right? They, I feel like they have the resources they, to at least they, try they, to they do, do this. You know, this comes back to the whole work from home argument. I think, mm-hmm. like realistically, I don't want to imagine how difficult this would be, anyways. In in like in house, I can only imagine trying to do it from your kitchen table. Um. So. Since we know there was a lot of excitement around and the community will find ways to work around this in the interim, we decided to go ahead with the launch. We are currently targeting a fix for cross-platform voice chat and an update targeted for shortly after crossplay goes live. So it's not for too long. It does mean that I probably will not do a lot of crossplay. I think if you're doing PC to Xbox, like PC and Xbox only, that's actually really easy. Mm-hmm. Open up Windows, open the Xbox app, get into a party chat. You're right. Um, God, I really, I can't believe I'm about to say this phones. You guys got phones, right? (laughs) Uh, discord, discord on discord is going to be the thing. We've talked about this on numerous other shows on boss rush. You guys can go back and find it. Both Corey and I pretty firmly believe discord has to be coming to console soon. We know that Sony has that has a deal with discord. What it entails. We have no idea. Microsoft technically has discord tied to their platform already. You can have your Xbox account linked to it. I, I got to imagine that voice chat is coming really soon for Discord to consoles. Like, I'm talking early 2022 at this point. 
because games like Destiny simply are not going to survive when it's when you can do something that's like proprietary, I guess, like Call of Duty. It's not as big of a deal. So then you, they just bake that straight into that release and they're like, ah, oh, this isn't a game that needs to go on forever or hasn't gone on for this an annual release. We don't give a shit. If we need to fix it, we'll fix it next year. And a game like this, though, that is definitely it's an FPS, but it's definitely bordering on MMO territory, um, if not like pretty fully there at this point, like a base level MMO for a shooter. It creates a huge problem. You know, you're not doing things like raids in Call of Duty. Like if voice chat messes up in team deathmatch, I don't care. I don't care if it messes up on my Xbox. I'm still going to play the match and I'll fix it afterwards. If I'm doing a raid, it's kind of a problem. Doing a dungeon, it's kind of a problem. Grandmaster Nightfalls, Trials, you know, Comp, Gambit. Like you're see, you're seeing the pattern here. And I think that this is going to create a really less than ideal experience for people who want to match into, you know, Nightfalls, for example. I think it's going to create a problem. Um, I do think that this also opens an opportunity, though. I think that with crossplay you're going to be able to... <sighs> How do I phrase this? I think you can take away some of the... Um, you must have a pre-made fire team assembled for some of these activities. Um, we know that there's a change to trials coming in Season 15. We just don't know what it is exactly. I think it's time to remove the barriers for everything except for a Grandmaster Nightfall in terms of uh, strikes maybe leave master behind it, but I think definitely that third level needs to be removed or you need to improve weapon drop chances for below. Um, we already have, you know, we already have um, freelance for crucible. We we're now at a point though, where we need to start having some of those barriers come down. Like we've seen the wild success from they even note here from LFG from uh, fire team finder. Uh, from built-in LFG on Xbox, you know, there, there's been so many solutions over the years. It's time. If, you, if you're going to really throw, like, all close to 1 million daily active users into one pool, you can start taking some of those barriers out. Yeah. It's it's just simply put, it's it's time to, especially when PvE is going to be automatically enabled crossplay. It's time. Yeah. Um, the last thing here that we have for, um, for chatting, I just kind of went off on a tangent there. Uh, text chat. Uh, we still see it as a critical tool for player communication in our action MMO. A cross play launch text chat will still be available on steam from launch through the witch queen. We'll add text chat support across the console platforms. We'll start with displaying text so that console players can at least see what their PC friends are talking about. Then we will add USB keyboard support so everyone can join in. USB keyboards on consoles will only be for chat and will not be able to control your character. Um, congrats. I'm going to turn it off. Yeah. I don't give a shit. If I, if I want to play with you, I'm going to be in a, I'm going to be in a voice chat with you, frankly. Yeah. And like, if you're like right now, like you said, like, between PC and Xbox, so you just like if if you want to chat, you just open the Xbox chat or Discord, right? Like I, I feel like that's, mm -hmm. I feel like those are the solutions. A lot of us are going to be using Discord on our phones. Let's yeah, put it that way. Yeah, a lot of us. Yeah, and uh, <sighs> I don't know. I I, I, I feel don't know. like. I, I just I, this is I, this is going this to be a so, catastrophe. This is so like. Every time I see like text chat stuff, I feel like it's so antiquated. Like this feels like a early WoW or Final Fantasy XI mm -hmm. MMO Guild Wars type thing. I, where I get know, it. If there was more to do in the open world, I would understand it. Yeah, but still, it's like yeah. there's so many easy ways to chat with your friends at this point. Right. That it's like, why even bother at this point? Unless and you, I, and, I mean, I I guess like it's also I guess it's like an accessibility thing too. Like if you have deaf players or whatever. It, or, oh, absolutely. So I I absolutely agree. Like I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to downplay that. I do think that's a, that's a great point you bring up right there. Yeah. For for deaf players, you know, I I, I see a post on Destiny the game on Reddit at least once twice a month. Like oh, I'm a deaf I'm a deaf fire team member. I'm I'm deaf or like. Uh, we have a deaf fire team member in our group. Like, thank you so much for being understanding, for explaining things in text chat to this person. We really appreciate it, this and that. Mm -hmm. um, not trying to downplay that at all. I think that opens up a whole new wide range of people who can play on console now, too, mm -hmm. um, with text chat. Mm -hmm. It's, it more so comes down to I don't like playing games with, like, big 
blobs of text on my screen at all. Um, I, I don't want that. If I was still sitting and playing at my desk, if my Series X was still in hooked up to my monitor, mm-hmm. I would probably get a keyboard then and just have it on hand. Yeah. In case, uh, I, mean, I, I like I like to run, you know, I like to run strikes and stuff. I like to run nightfalls, especially with second tier up, and I'm usually matched with lower level players. Yeah, um, I, I like doing things like that. That's totally fine. But it's not something that I'm going to do when I'm sitting in my recliner out there. I don't want to have to keep a keyboard down between that or in my uh, in my coffee table or something. Oh, uh, because I know my girlfriend's going to freak out if she sees a coffee or a keyboard sitting on the coffee table, right. much less one that has to be corded. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the the crossplay launch, uh, the roadmap, uh, early season 15 is when you're going to get the Bungie name, Bungie friends, platform invites, multiplayer matchmaking, search, and social privacy. Um, so this is kind of in line with what we thought. It's probably going to happen about three weeks into the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they want the actual roll out of the season to go you're going to get this between you're going to get it between this and between festival of the lost right this is probably going to roll out the week i'm in florida realistically yeah which thank god if the game breaks i'm not around i don't have to be the one to talk about it on tower casuals <laughs> thank god can't <laughs> soon wait after hear, launch, i can't wait to hear nerd journalists hot takes on that <laughs> fiasco god soon after launch cross-platform voice chat this winter Bungie name changes, text chat display on consoles, text input via USB keyboards on consoles. Um, I think that this is awesome. I'm very, very, very excited for this. Um, This is a feature I wish would have been there when I went to go play on PS4 in Destiny 1. Um, I took a year off from Destiny. When I came back, I jumped over to PS4 because most of my Xbox friends stopped playing. I had one friend, though, who was still playing on Xbox and one of my very best friends. I really wish that... uh, he could have jumped in and done some raids with me over on PlayStation or vice versa. I would have done wrath of the machine way sooner and actually probably finished it. Um, so that's cool. Um, but the question of when does cross play go live, they don't have an answer yet. Uh, team is working hard to dot the I's cross the T's. Uh, we'll know, let you know when the date's locked in. They're almost certainly telling us on the 24th. They're not going to tell us before. Um, again, I expect, I expect all of this to go live. As soon as I'm in, as soon as I'm on a plane to Florida, I expect them to be like, yep, we're dropping it today. <laughs> so this is going to happen today before I leave town. I leave on a Wednesday. Have fun, everyone. Have fun talking about that fiasco and how it breaks the game. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, we got one last Iron Banner this season, August 3rd through the 3rd through the 10th. I'm not even logging into the game next week. Truthfully, I'm done with iron banner for the season. I have nothing left to get this season outside of the epilogue quest. That's going to go live on the 10th. I want to know. I want to know what's happening with the epilogue. I mean, so at this point we can pretty, we can pretty reasonably deduce. It's going to solve the future war cult problem. Um, I think that, that the civil war storyline is going to come to a head with the epilogue. Um, We'll see what happens. I'm very excited though. And it's something that's just there for two weeks. So it's kind of like a do it or lose it type of thing. Um, Really want to see it. I think it's a live event that's going to play out over two weeks. If that's the case, super into it. Um, And obviously it's going to set the stage for what happens uh, next season. For what happens starting on the 24th. This is going to be really cool. I'm I'm here for it. I'm in. I'm very curious if they're going to pull the game down for more than four hours ahead of the 24th. Um. If crossplay does launch on the 24th, it's almost a guarantee they're going to pull the whole game down for like 12 hours ahead of time to implement some things so that they don't have a complete crash and fiasco like they did at the beginning of this season. Um, very excited. Very, very ready. Um, I don't see anything else right now. Um, I don't see anything else in here. Um, really cool piece of artwork that's that's there. Uh, it's it's Riven and it's really really dope. I like it. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be it for the twat this week. Are you talking guys. about the Titan Bubble one? I am talking about the Titan Bubble one. It looks really dope. I I had to pause for a second because my warlock in pillars casts a bubble like that. For protection. 
that I can walk in and out of. <laughs> that is clearly not a warlock. That is not a priest. That is, in fact, a titan. That is uh, the rain gutters themselves. It's all. It's 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 good. It's good. Yeah, like he. I got I got really distracted. Sorry. Uh, three four three is putting out updates about the Halo flight. Oh, still God. not live. Um, I, I really I really love what uh, Brian Gerard is saying. Uh, don't turn on each other, community friends. It's what the bots want. Uh, bickering with each other is not going to make this go any faster. Things are looking up, still working through some steps, but the original issue is resolved. We have a lingering minor issue that can result in your initial attempts at matchmaking to return to a dedicated server error. Um, we believe it will resolve and improve soon, and it's within the bounds of our tech preview goals. So that's pretty good. That's good that you know they're getting this kink out of the system now. They did say this is a two-month-old build, so um, and that they're going to let us know when they go officially live, which, fingers crossed, man, it's going to happen here real real soon uh i'm excited yeah i'm excited i'm excited for people to experience it i'm i'm not going to get to it seems like but it's I, i'm excited to hear what you know like you and joe have to say about it for sure so i am yeah i am i'm very excited we actually have some questions though tonight Corey. let's do it we have questions for the first time in quite a while i feel bad because we put up the bat signal for for some questions um, I got two of them here, and unfortunately, it's one of them is like four questions about Halo. So, um, Aaron, buddy, I love you, but um, I cannot tell you anything about Halo. It's about Master Chief and Cortana. It's a lot of fun. How does it feel? It feels great to be going back to Halo. I'm very excited. Because of the limited time you've had with it, does it feel like good quality Halo again or something totally different? I don't know. I can TV. tell you it looks like Halo. Yeah, it, it looks authentically Halo. Um, I, I do encourage, like anybody listening, I really encourage you to go watch the developer stream from yesterday. Um, I caved and watched it tonight. I watched a, I watched one video yesterday, and it was Halo running on the Xbox One, and it looked phenomenal. I did not expect it to run that well on Xbox, uh, on Xbox One at least. And then I saw did they show it running on Xbox one. It did show it running on Xbox one. They showed it on Xbox one and they showed it on series X and it looks, it looks good. It looks really good. Way better than I expected on Xbox one. Well, I watched the Xbox but, series X stuff on pure Xbox and it looked amazing. I didn't know the they showed series it on X looks phenomenal. That's, uh, that's what I this, said, right? Did I say Xbox yes, one or Xbox yes, series? The, seri the series and uh, series X and S build is just incredible. Uh, I, I can't wait for this. This is it's been a long time coming. I've been really excited uh, playing some Halo five with uh, Colonel Panic lately. We've been jumping into some uh, some some social playlists, some war zones, uh, getting all ready. And oh, man, I can't I can't wait. Now, the only better thing you could tell me is that you got Promethean Knights out of the game. And then it's just gonna be like, oh, best Halo ever right there. Do get rid of him. Get rid of the Knights and bring back the flood. Hmm. Mm. Um, your second question comes from longtime friend of the show, longtime friend of Corey and I's Todd Oxtra. Hey guys, I'm a lapsed Destiny 2 player. I finished the Beyond Light campaign, but is there any more single player content to enjoy? Yes. There's, there's so much, especially there's if you, so much. It's, there's so much like even not. I mean, it's not technically quote unquote single player, but it's all match made content that you can go in and, and do. And like there's always like the seasonal story stuff that you can do. Right. Like it, it, there's so much content. It's o almost overwhelming, honestly, especially if you like are going in and you're a lapse player and you're going to look at like, what is this? What is this? What is that? You know? Yeah, um, and that's what I was going to say, too. I mean, like, that requires buying a season pass. And this goes back to the season pass issue we talked about last week. Like, if people want to experience this content, please give them the rewards, too. Like, please let them work on their old season passes. Like, I don't know if this content automatically becomes match-made content or automatically becomes available to everybody in the director after the season ends, but I would hope so. So you can at least experience the story beats because the Keitel story was so good. The Crow story beats, so good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I would say that any of the seasonal storylines, so for Hunt, Chosen, and for Splicer, you can do solo. Yeah. You can do the Expunges solo. Mm -hmm. um, 
you might have a little bit of trouble with the final boss uh, with uh, Quaria. You might have a little bit of an issue with her. If you're not uh, super nimble or, you know, they'll have, like, meta weapons, but you should be able to wear her down mm-hmm. eventually. Yeah. I mean, you'll um, just have to be patient. You won't, you know, I mean. Yeah. And, I mean, like, and that, again, that's, like, one of the problems that's going to be solved when you go into um, next season is an activity like that, which if you didn't have a fire team, oh, well. Um, I believe that is a mat. I be- oh, expunges are not match made. I take that back. Expunges are not match made. Uh-uh. Um, so I mean, but you can still do the entire storyline up to that point. Uh-huh. You can do literally everything in Kaido storyline by yourself. Uh-huh. You can do everything in the season of the hunt storyline. The Hawkmoon one. I mean, if you can complete Hawkeye Hawkmoon solo, uh, kudos. Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh... possible to do uh, Persage. It's definitely possible to do that solo. Uh, it's, it's especially now. Quest. Especially yeah, now. Oh, especially now. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's um, a great quest too. I would highly recommend like at least it doing at least doing it one time. Right. I know you can get the random rolls on on the weapon, but uh, it's it's a really cool, fun, creepy quest. Kind of has like this haunted vibe to it. Almost. It's cool. It's really cool. We talked about it. What probably three or four months ago at this point when it came out, but uh, it's awesome. I love it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I I think that I speak for everybody when I say that Presage is one of the absolute high points of Mm -hmm. um, the last year or two of Destiny content. Yeah, definitely. Um, It reminded me of the uh, Outbreak quest, but like spookier almost. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's real good. Again, encourage absolutely everybody to... uh, to go play it, go do Presage. Find, find, you know, Todd, find some people to uh, to do Hawkmoon. You know, when uh, when cross crossplay goes live. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm not sure if you're playing on PC now or if you're still over on Xbox. I know at one point you were kind of bouncing back and forth. Mm-hmm. You've been wondering when it's going to come to PC. Um, feel free to uh, you know drop drop us an invite. We'll go we'll go run some of these things with you. Uh, the lament quest line for uh in beyond light if you haven't done that i think that's because mm-hmm. that came out after the expansion release yeah that's a great storyline especially if you want some really deep lore that's good doing the stasis fragments they're they're a bit grindy but i think you get some really good story from earning the aspects seeing the interactions between lc and Anna bray um yeah i mean there's i think there's plenty of content to still enjoy um I know a lot of people complain about things like Gambit or Crucible Solo. Um, I think they've added plenty of options there, though. Um, you know, Freelance Playlist for Iron Banner, for example, I personally find is a lot better. We know they're doing one for Trials. Um, I don't know. I, I think, like, you know, match-made content is better than it's ever been in the game. But I do understand where it still is. And it, this goes back to my call earlier. It, it is time to put matchmaking in a lot more PvE things. It is time to test the waters with it in dungeons. If it goes well in dungeons, add it to raids. You know, choose if you if you want. Like, you, you will have to physically select a node that says, like, raid freelance or something. Mm-hmm. And load in. Yeah. Like, you're going to have to do that. And that's fine. You know, do something like that. Do what Guided Games was meant to be, essentially. Like, I think that would be a really cool option. Um, but it is there. there is plenty of content right now, at least surface-level content. You can get all the storylines for the most part. But I do find it a pity that some of the really cool content is locked behind matchmaking. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, the raids, the dungeons. I, the three dungeons are superb. Um the raids, I think all four raids that are in the game right now are good. I would never match make for something like Last Wish or Garden, but I would do it for Deep Stone or for Vault just to go in and explain mechanics to people. Mm-hmm. I'd be 100% down for that. Same with the same with the dungeons. I mean, I'd, I'd be totally here for it. So, uh, With that, though, we're going to move on to our final segment of the night, which is Lore Corner. Love Lore Corner. I want to say one thing, too, about uh, oh, go ahead. No, uh, no, go ahead. The, go ahead the single on. player stuff, just because like I did do a lot of it by myself, just because of like you know friend schedules and everything, right? Like my right. schedule's so off compared to everybody else's. Uh, it's really fun to do solo. Uh, honestly, it's 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 not really that difficult, right? Like Josh said. Uh, plus, going into next season with a long season, like you'll be able to catch up. Yeah pretty quickly uh this is the time if you're a lapsed player just like we said with season of arrivals this is the time to do this is absolutely the time to jump back in if you've if you've you know 
I mean, I, I feel like this season, especially towards the end, is going to be a season of arrivals type thing because this next oh, yeah. expansion, like you thought people were excited for Beyond Light. This is like this is like the big one. This uh, the Witch Queen is going to be the big expansion uh, for this saga, I feel like, you know. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we kind of I feel like we said that with Beyond Light, which it was, but I think they're all going to be Beyond Light or Forsaken level going forward. Right. Like Shadow Keep was a really weird in between time mm-hmm. when they were still kind of following that Activision model. Mm-hmm. Um and now that they're free of that, you know, we're we're seeing I think more creativity come out of Bungie I, than ever. I'm just saying like Savathun is such a like I know Beyond Light was more like the darkness and how do we wield it and stuff. But Savathun right. gives us, it gives us a figure to point at and say, this is the next big bad. She's here. She's coming. Right. Like that sort of thing. And I feel like that makes it a little bit bigger. Right. Then just like, right. Oh, well the stranger's coming back. We're going to learn how to wield the darkness. That's cool. Like that was awesome to see. But like, I feel like when you have a, a, a distinct villain to point at that, maybe people who aren't knowledgeable about the lore, all that much right and you have a villain to point at yeah i think it makes it a lot easier to be excited like oh man this is this is going to be like the ultimate test for our well game. especially when you when you drop the you know the line of this is oryx's sister uh, you know the, this is oryx's sister this is crota's aunt i mean you're tying it back to those destiny one experiences mm-hmm. right like they we saw them do that with um with hash Ladoon mm-hmm. in shadow keep we saw him do it with zivu Arath in season of the hunt so like right these are things that are not going to go away these are going to keep happening like those those little name drops mm-hmm. are going to keep going you, you gotta love it though man i superb yeah absolutely superb yeah uh, and never a better time yeah and uh my friend mitch and i are are looking for people to play with a lot so i mean i know you messaged me a couple weeks ago todd and uh just schedules and stuff. I didn't get back to you. That's, you know, that's on me, but it's just scheduling just wasn't working in the last couple of weeks. But my friend Mitch and I are always looking for friends to play with, and we'll definitely play that content. Uh, again, if, if our schedules line up. So, right. Well, all right. Lore corner, lore love corner. Me. Love, love me some lore corner, Josh. So it's a really short one. Uh, this week, I, you know, running out of stuff from this season, we may have to circle back and cover a few other things. Um, but this is the last piece of, uh, of Ada's lore book, uh, pathfinding. I'm really, really going to have to, uh, to find something next season or for the next couple of weeks to talk about. Um, but Lewis was the first to notice Ada. The bird's head darted in her direction as it shuffled on its post. Hawthorne turned a brief look of surprise on her face before she grinned. If it isn't the reclusive armorer, Hawthorne said. I was just thinking about checking on you. Ada reached the top of the stairs and marveled at the expanse of the last city stretching from Hawthorne's vantage point. Oh, was I making too much noise again? Hawthorne shook her head. It's the opposite. It's way too quiet down here. Ada chuckled. Things have been going more smoothly as of late. Glad to hear it, Hawthorne said and nodded. She removed a morsel of meat from the pouch at her waist and tossed towards Lewis, who gobbled it voraciously. So what was the answer? Centuries-old research on matter programming left behind by a megalomaniac, Ada said. Hawthorne whistled. Sounds like a trip. It has been. I feel quite changed by this experience, Ada said. A slight lit to her voice. Change can be good. Ada watched engine flares weave through the city's expanse. There was one thing from our last conversation that stuck with me. Hawthorne raised an eyebrow. Only one? That's definitely disappointing. You said you weren't sure if I had any friends, Ada continued. Ada, I didn't mean to. If I'm being honest, social connection has never been my strong suit. I know it can be scary to put yourself out there, especially with everything you've been through, Hawthorne said. Ada considered her words. It can be, but I'm finding this new journey to be a little less daunting when I'm willing to walk it with others. Sounds like a pretty good lesson, Hawthorne said with a smirk. Ada let her gaze wander over the constellation of architecture gleaming in the last city, the meandering grid of roadways and the rolling landscape beyond. She breathed in deeply, letting the air fill her chassis. Should probably get back down there. I have a lot of work ahead of me, Ada said, clearing her throat. Hawthorne clasped a hand on Ada's shoulder, startling the ecto. Don't be a stranger, Ada. You come up from your cave more often. You might find you have more friends than you think. I I mean, I I really like the story they told with Ada in this book. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And I also like that they kind of subtly tie um, armor synth, uh, transmog, whatever you want to call it, back into Clovis Bray. Mm-hmm. You know, re- still referencing the Bray Tech Institute that we had to go to so many different times, still referencing things that we did in the Beyond Light campaign. Um, I really, really enjoy that. Um, I think this is an interesting look. I mean, she went to the old uh, Bergusa Forge, which, if you grinded out forges last summer, that's probably where you were. (laughs) Uh, If you were anything like me, that's the only forge that you would do because it was just simply the easiest. It was simply the easiest, and it was honestly, you at least had a little bit of cover in it. Yeah. Um, No electrical shit on the ground. It was pretty easy to hide. Um, I, I think this is an interesting piece because these are two characters we pretty often forget about. Right. Hawthorne has literally done nothing in game. Like the since lore is the, different. I mean, since the Red game, War, since pretty the much. Red War, I mean, her contributions to the game are literally gone now. Yeah, it's like um, uh, if you're in a clan and you want to do those clan bounties, it's literally all you go do, right? Or if your clan levels up or whatever, you go get your engram, and that's kind of it, right? Like, I mean. I mean, we always joke around like, oh, we can push her off the ledge and be hilarious. Maybe she'll be a real guardian someday. Uh, but. Yeah, maybe. Um, you have to figure if anybody's going to be one, it's going to be her. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, of course, you know, Ada. I mean, Ada never really had that much to do in even Black Armory content to begin with. Mm-hmm. You know, we never went to her for any other quests that I remember, mm-hmm. you know, outside of the like, Izanagi's. So, just, I don't I don't know. I think this is a really good lore piece for two characters that are pretty often forgot about, and it's it's good. I like that it's only five chapters long. It's a really quick book to read. You get it over the course of the Armor Synth quest line. Right. Uh, and it's one of those, like, not everything has to be like, oh my god, this massive lore dump of, oh, this is what's happening in the ruins of old Chicago. This is what Shayura's uh, fire team is going through, you know, from the Trials lore. This is what Vance was doing fucking around on Mercury. Uh, Osiris's experiments. Like, not everything has to be, like, this massive universe-changing thing, like the Books of Sorrow, even. Like, sometimes it's just, like, these little pieces are, like, almost more fun and really nice. Like, to remind us that these these characters have individual lives outside of just shooting guns with us. Right. And that that's kind of a nice palate cleanser before what inevitably is coming. Right. So, yeah, I I enjoyed it. It was a good one. I uh, uh, I mean like you like you said you forget about these characters and you just think about Zavala or Ikora or right. Osiris, right? You don't think about I mean, you know, we've all been sitting here for for how long screaming about how Ikora's not being used, right. guys? Hawthorne's literally been chilling there in the same spot for five years. <laughs> five years. And Ada Ada was so worthless they just shut the door. <laughs> and until and, they right, shut they shut it and then they reopened it because they felt bad. Yeah. So I mean, it's cool. That was a good. That was a good piece, Josh. It's a good piece. Um, piece. before we get out of here, though. I do want to say, um, kind of addressing short content times, uh, we know, like, especially this season, this season has felt really long for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels like we've kind of been treading water for, like, six weeks now. Yeah. Well, um, it, it, they put all... Not even really in terms of the narrative, just, like, it's been slow. Yeah, well, they put all, they put the narrative stuff in the first half, and then, obviously, Solstice of Heroes is, like, a big summer event that they just, right. you know, it's a whole month, and then... We're just kind of like sitting like, I mean, it's a whole month, man. And like, you got, I mean, it's the same thing that we did in, uh, in chosen, honestly. Yeah. We had, we had guardian games to close it out literally the last three weeks. But I mean, I guess there, I think the pacing was slightly better. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't know if this season is a little bit longer to begin with. It feels like it's a couple weeks longer. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I think it started beginning of May. Plus like you'll have. Like it's it's weird because like uh, Solstice was a month long, and then they're not doing anything during Iron Banner, and then the epilogue starts after Iron Banner. So it's like, yeah, we're taking a week off. That's, that's like that's go. like five or six weeks worth of of you know essentially non yeah progressive content, right? It's just like events, which is fine. Like I, it's fine, right? Like I I haven't logged in 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 like a week or so, right? Like I. Yeah, if you unless you're like super in the solstice of heroes, and I mean like we don't have moments of triumph right now. That's I mean, coming in the fall. Even if you are though, right? You got your whole solstice done in the first week. Like, 
I, they made it so much easier this season. Thank God. If it was the grind, it always was. I probably would have skipped it, frankly. Yeah. So I, it was just that bad, but um, kind of addressing how we're going to treat some of these times coming up. Um, it's always going to be, of course, it's always going to be destiny first. You know, we'll, we'll cover swaps. We'll talk about anything, you know, unique that we've done in the game. We'll talk about, you know, topics the community is addressing right now or wants addressed. Kind of give our input on stuff like that. That only goes so far though. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, at some point, if we only did that, it would, it would be like a 20 minute show. Yeah. Right. And, um, so I mean, Corey and I talked, we've joked about it, um, on the show, but, um, I think we're seriously taking into consideration, you know, like kind of trying to plan out how are we going to handle a six month season? If there is no season 16, yeah. which again, we'll know in a couple of weeks, if there is no additional content drop in late November, early December, then what do we, what do we do until Witch Queen comes, especially if Witch Queen's not until like March, Right. Which is the fear right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that Witch Queen is like late January, early February at this point. Um, that will significantly cut down on what we need to plan for and adjust for. But the plan, I think, right now is in November to legitimately have part of the show be about Halo. Mm-hmm. Kind of break down our thoughts on our thoughts on Infinite, on the multiplayer, the campaign. Looks like it's going to be a free roam experience. Kind of pick your own path through it. Um, I want to talk about some of that. Um, we got Xbox's 20th anniversary coming up. You know, kind of, you know, be like, hey, this is kind of what we're playing during downtimes in Destiny. Like, I'm going to be playing a lot of Battlefield. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we go give you my thoughts on Battlefield. Or, I mean, Battlefield hey, looks super interesting right we now. We squatted up and back for Blood. Um, you know, it's on Game Pass. Like, we all, the Tower Casuals crew got together and played Back for Blood one night. Like, here's what we kind of thought about it, you know? Yeah. Things like that. Like, just, you know, still keeping it in that same realm of like, hey, these are like the games we're playing with our friends when we're when destiny's down like i know nerd generalist and i have been talking a lot we tried getting back in the eso we played it for like two weeks and we're like nope we're good yeah uh, he's been playing a ton of final fantasy 14 yeah i've been playing a ton of pillars of eternity like you i would, know, I'm I not would saying, play like, final fantasy 14 if it came to xbox like i really would yeah. i just don't i don't feel like sitting at this computer longer than i have to right like i, I mean wanna... i'm i am realistically going to try it out on ps5 yeah, I yeah. Well, I don't have a PlayStation Five, so uh, I. Uh, but I like I work at this computer. I produce and and do podcasts at this computer, right? Like I I, I don't want to use it as my game space. I think I've learned that it's good to separate your workspace from your play space, right? And right. I, I feel like a lot of people kind of learn that during the pandemic and stuff, right? Where. Mm-hmm maybe I just want to go sit in, on the couch in front of my TV, you know, um, or else I, I, I've been interested in final fantasy 14 for a long time. And, uh, I, I hope it comes to Xbox at some point. I really do. Yeah. But I, I think that, you know, we've joked that we're going to call ourselves the casual slayers when yeah. Halo comes out, but, um, I think it's going to be more of we're legitimately, I know that shows like DCP have done this in the past. Like they've created a whole ass other show and that's not what we want to do here. Mm -hmm. But we do want to take probably like 10, 15 minutes a show when it's slow to be like, Hey, here's kind of, here's like the multiplayer game that we're checking out right now with our friends. Mm -hmm. Here's what we think of it. You know, is it scratching the itch for us right now? Like, right. or here, here's the RPG that I'm playing right now to scratch my itch. Because that's what I play mm-hmm. Destiny and I play a lot of RPGs. Mm-hmm. You know, I do play a decent amount of shooters, but it's like nothing quite scratches that itch like Destiny. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll play something for a week or two and then I'm back to it. Like, I at least during slow times, I'll still log in like once or tw- once, maybe twice a week. Mm-hmm. I run some bounties, but now if there's not weeklies I got to worry about for that bright dust counter. If you're keeping track at home, we're now at 90,000. Do, do, do I need to put a, uh, like every episode on the video version? Do I just need to put a little counter at the bottom that says how many, how much bright dust you have? Quite possibly. Uh, we're, we're, we're going to see how far into the season it takes for me to hit a hundred K. It's that it's going to happen by the completion of the season pass though, at the very latest. Yeah. Um, since you get 10 K from that. Uh, but you know, just kind of things, kind of things like that. Um, we still want it to be, of course, about destiny, mm-hmm. but we, we, let's be honest. We don't want to have to put the show on hiatus for like a month and then like unexpectedly drop something. I mean, because we, Bungie decided to do something in the Twab or in the season event or something like that. I mean, we already take two weeks off for Christmas and, and stuff, right? Like, 
it's well, yeah we already have built-in breaks for christmas christmas and new year's you know they're, they're back to back i'll be out of town anyways mm-hmm. uh thanksgiving we t- thanksgiving's a thursday for god's sake yeah. you're not getting an episode from us chris our thanksgiving week yeah you know basically we're taking the dawning off as we're taking the yawning off this year yeah um so it's really kind of about how do we deal with you know the span from really like mid-october because that's probably when the seasonal narrative is done is mid to late october how do we handle basically that through new year's right because after New Year's is when we should be getting a lot more Witch Queen info. But yeah. It's, we've got about six or seven weeks I mean, that we've I think, really had to plan something. I mean, Halo, I think, is the big one. that Even De- even Destiny players are interested in, in seeing what Halo is going to be all about, right? Because, like, mm-hmm. obviously Bungie created Halo, and it's obviously almost like a sister series to it, to an extent. And, and that's why we felt okay with talking about Halo on this show. Yeah. We, we were talking like, oh, it's going to be a short episode tonight, even with the crossplay stuff. Like, we'll talk about Halo for a little bit afterwards. Well, the Halo talks are going to push to next week because I don't have a topic for next week. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the Halo flight next week. I'm yeah. really excited to share that. I feel like there's a pretty big crossover audience here. Mm-hmm. Especially, especially since, like, Destiny's PvP is basically non-existent at this point if unless you're like a super competitive and play with your friends or be just like a super casual person like there's no like mid-range pvp experience for destiny players to really and like halo is going to fill that void right like i I think that i think a lot of people who want pvp are going to move to halo or or battlefield i guess too but like probably i I definitely think so yeah so uh especially if you're playing on xbox or pc Oh God, Corey, get us out of here! All right, uh, we're gonna get out of here. I do. Uh, before we get out of here, I do want to thank everybody who does listen to this show. It, it means a lot to Josh and I. Uh, I was talking to Josh before the show, and I was like, "Hey, Josh, in in Apple Podcasts, just type in Destiny to the Game." And the fact that we show up number three on that list uh i mean i don't really know how it's ordered but i'm pretty sure it's ordered by popularity uh to some extent and the fact that we show up there you know we have more than three thousand of you listen every week is incredible and i just i want to thank everybody for for giving us a chance in a in a a place where we can talk about this game with you uh you know and uh it's it's incredible. And Josh, I want to thank you for taking the time every Thursday to hang out with me for an hour or so because it's fun. I, I do enjoy it. It truly is the highlight of the week. It is. It, it really is. It's like the I do so many other things that like this is kind of like the 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 break from all that, you know, and, and I appreciate you and I appreciate the listeners. Uh, you can email us at towercasuals at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Tower Casuals. Send us your questions. Send us your thoughts. Send us what you're playing during your downtime of Destiny. We want to know these things so we can For sure. kind of, you know, m- work a segment around that because obviously we're going <laughs> to be doing that a lot more. Uh, Josh, where can we find you? As always, Twitter at Josh underscore Finn, two ends. Come see me rant about Pillars of Eternity. See my absolute obsession with it. Catch some Halo clips. And listen to me scream to the mountaintops like you're going to for the next year and a half about why I vowed is secretly the most important game that Microsoft is making right now. <laughs> Just because you're obsessed with Pillars of Eternity, right? Dude, I'm telling you. I'm su- I swear <laughs> to God. Corey, I, sw- I swear to Phil Spencer. I swear to Phil Spencer. Get me my Xbox. I'm putting my hand on it. Where is it? Where is it at? Uh, it's in the living room, so it's not <laughs> happening. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mind that I'm putting my hand on the Titan Shield. I mean, I swear on Saint, that... I swear on Saint Fourteen. Everybody needs to play Pillars of Eternity. <laughs> oh man, you can you can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on if you're in the Nintendo stuff. You can find me on Nintendo Power Block. Uh, and uh, that's that's about it. I want to thank everybody for watching. And until next time, we love you. Goodbye.